Father, we thank you. We thank you for this time. We thank you that we were able to worship you with songs of faith, songs of declaration of our faith that you are the one we adore. You are the one that we praise. You give everything that our hearts desire as we look to you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that you are faithful. We thank you that you are true. We thank you that even when we are faithless, you are faithful because that is who you are. People of God, can we just lift up our voices and just pray right now? Father, we thank you. We thank you right now. Just lift your voices. Let this place, let us pray to together. Let us pray together to the God who answers. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your word. Today we believe your word will minister to each and every one of us. Your word will minister for every need. Faith would arise in our hearts. Faith in an unchanging God. Faith in a God who is for us and not against us. Faith in the God who answers by power, who answers by signs and wonders, who attests his word with signs and miracles. Today we believe in faith is a day of breakthrough for each and every one of us. We believe as your word is spoken, just as your word says, that it, it being mixed with faith bears fruit. Today we stand here, just standing in faith, knowing that as your word is spoken, it will bear fruit because these are your words. Holy Spirit, we welcome you right now. Church, just lift your voice and welcome the Holy Spirit right now. Holy Spirit, we welcome you right now in this place. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, to come and minister to us. Have your way. Have your way. Let every mindset that is contrary to the word of God be broken down. Let it be torn down in the name of Jesus. Today, eyes would be opened to see the truth of Christ in us and the glorious work that he's done for us and who we are in Christ. We would stand because our God, you have prepared us for victory. You have empowered us for victory. You have equipped us for victory. And through you, we can and walk in victory for greater is he who is in us than he that is in the world so holy spirit we welcome you right now we we know you are already here but we just welcome you to take over and have your way have your way in each and every one of us today with every word spoken Holy Spirit, you be the interpreter, you be the translator, you be the revelator, you be everything that you want to be so that this word would draw us closer to you, Jesus. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And all the saints of God said, Amen, Amen. amen. Today, we will be talking about the shield of faith. How many of you are excited? Amen. The shield of faith is an amazing, amazing uh, part of the armor that God has given us to walk in victory. And it is up to you and I to take on that shield of faith. It is up to us to take on that shield of faith. So let's get geared up for the word. So uh, we will read the scriptures right now. So please turn with me in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6. We will read from 10 to 18 because this is one portion that talks about spiritual warfare and the armor of God. So let's read. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Go ahead. Yes. Having done all to stand. Stand. Yes. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication, perseverance and uh, being watchful to the end supplication in the spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints so uh, when uh, paul is uh, telling the the saints so 
uh, when Paul writes a letter, he's not writing to a particular set of people that are in the high places in the church. He's writing to the saints of the church. Do you know who are the saints of TLC? If, if you know who it is, lift your hands. Yes, you and I are the saints of TLC. So when Paul writes this letter, it may be, it may be written to the saints in Ephesus, but this is also a letter to every believer. So this is very real, very applicable to each and every one of us. And in today's portion, Paul is reminding the believers about the reality of spiritual warfare. Why is this important? Because there is a truth that our natural world, everything that we see around us, is bound to a spiritual one. The Bible says that the things that we see come from the things that are unseen. So uh, what we see comes from what is unseen. So whether we like it or not, we are in spiritual warfare. There are only two sides to it. There is no neutral side. You can either be on the victorious side, that is the side with Jesus Christ, or you can be on the side that is doomed to failure, that is the enemy. And uh, when Paul is uh, reminding us about the spiritual warfare, he's not trying to scare people. He's not trying to say that, okay, now you have to go up high into a mountain and you have to sit on those high places and, you know, start doing things that nobody else does. No, every believer, every believer in life will have battles, will have this warfare because there is an enemy. There is an enemy for you and I. But the good news is we don't have to worry and stand in fear against the enemy because we are equipped for this battle. God has given us everything we need to win this battle. And it is his armor and his power. That's why it stands with stand strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So we cannot do this on our own. We have to do it with him, in him. And even though we are with him and in him, we cannot be passive. We are the ones who are supposed to take and put on the armor. If God has given you the armor, there is no point in leaving it back and facing these battles without the armor. Because that way, you will not win. Uh, I remember in a few services back in the uh, 7.45 a.m. service, uh, we were just talking about spiritual warfare. And uh, we were saying that if you, once you're saved, if you go for spiritual warfare without the armor you might not win the battle but you will reach heaven faster <laughs> yeah so uh, we are called to live victoriously in this life this life here on earth God has equipped us to walk in victory and that is why we have been given the choice to put on this armor not anybody else we saints of God and the good news is when we do that and stand firm, we will be. The Bible says we will be able to stand against the wiles of the wicked one. So there is no question. There is no might be. There is no maybe. There is no sometimes. But you and I will be able to stand against the wiles of the wicked one. God's armor is more than sufficient if we just put it on and let it work in faith. Now the reason I put that picture is. Uh, many times we think okay now. Uh, because Paul is talking. When he's writing this letter. This is what he sees in front of him. This is what he sees. The Roman soldiers uh, that are guarding him. And this is their armor. So what Paul is doing is he's trying to break down spiritual warfare. Into a way that our minds can understand. We can see. Because we don't have to make it so that it's very complicated for every believer. And we have to stand back. No only the pastors do it. No only the prophets do it. No only the ministers do it. Or no only the prayer intercessors do it. You and I are called to stand and fight and win victory in this spiritual battle. So he breaks it down into components that you and I can relate to. And that is why, so he sees this Roman soldier. This is how a Roman soldier would look. And now he takes every part of God's armor, God's uh, spiritual armor or the weaponry that he's given us and corresponds it to something that he can see with his eyes. And he is conveying it to us. So that's why he talks about the helmet, the belt, the shoes, the breastplate, the shield, the sword, all these components. 
And when we have this armor, it is something that we have access to every day of our lives. Because if a Roman soldier is enlisted into the Roman army, then it is the job of the government to give him the armor. The moment you and I said yes to Jesus being our Lord and Savior, you and I have been enlisted into a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And that kingdom is not stingy, is not out of money, is not out of resources that the king of that kingdom will not give you the armor. That king has already given you the armor. In fact, he has already won the battle over the enemy and he has placed you in this place now here, not so that you can walk in defeat, but in walking in victory, the people of this world will see that these people who call themselves children of God serve a God who is victorious, serve a God who is faithful and serve a God who does not leave his children alone. So people of God, we are the ones to put it on and God's armor is more than sufficient if we just put it on and let it work in faith. So today we are going to look at the shield of faith. So now when Paul talks about the scripture, it's, it's, very, it's interesting. It's, it's, you know, you cannot deny that the Holy Spirit is the one who's inspiring uh, the uh, people of God to write this word. Because every word in the scripture has meaning. And uh, now Paul is telling us to take on the shield of faith. So you saw the shield of faith that the Roman soldier was having. It is something big by which he can be covered. He can stand in that, um, in that fight. For example, if this is my shield, this uh, pulpit is my shield and there are uh, fights coming against me. All I have to do is this. All I have to do is this. I don't have to go and do this. I don't have to go and take, uh, 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 try to remove the weapons. I stand behind and position myself. If this is faith, I position myself in faith. And so when we position ourselves with this shield of faith that God has given us, Paul says, above all taking on the shield of faith and you look at the translation he's not trying to say the shield of faith is more important than the other parts of the armor he's not saying that even if you miss the other armor make sure you have shield he's saying above all in other translations it says in every circumstance in every circumstance of life we can face any battle with the shield of faith. Faith in God because it will protect you. The Christian life is one of faith. There's no question about it. It is a life that you live by faith. In fact, it is a life that you enter in by faith. It is not the repetition of a confession that someone has told you that gets, in, gets you into this life. But it is believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth that Jesus is Lord over your life. And even when we exercise the shield of faith, in this life, every situation and circumstance, we can face with the shield of faith. Faith pleases God. The Bible says faith pleases God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. In fact, uh, in the Gospels, there are three times when Jesus marvels or is amazed or, uh, you know, is surprised, taken aback. Imagine a God who is all-knowing, a God who knows what is going to happen, is suddenly says, oh, all three of them have to do with faith. Two of them, in a positive way, one of them in a negative way. But all three is on faith. For example, when, when the Roman centurion comes to Jesus in faith, understanding in faith the authority in this, then it is man who is the son of God. And the way he commands demons, the way he speaks to sicknesses and sicknesses flee. He says, no, you don't have to come to my house. You speak for I am a man under authority. So he is talking about even, so even that parallel is so good because right now when Paul is talking about the parallel of the Roman army's uh, weaponry 
and uh, uh, you know uh, taking us to uh, see how the spiritual armor is there here is a roman centurion who is part of the roman army who knows what authority is from being in the army knowing that there is a higher spiritual authority standing in front of him and his name is jesus and jesus says jesus being amazed says i have not seen such faith it amazed him it shows that god's heart is pleased with faith the next was the syrophoenician woman who came for her daughter's healing and we know the story some people say jesus called her a dog it is open to interpretation but she says even the dogs get the crumbs from the table and you know i i correlate that with the mustard seed faith she doesn't want the bread she says jesus even if i get a crumb of what you have that is enough for my daughter's healing a crumb she knows how big jesus is and she says just that crumb is enough and then jesus says great is your faith go then he goes to his hometown let's put it in perspective he comes to his church <laughs> he goes to his hometown and they are so familiar with him they are so familiar with who he is in the natural they are so familiar with the son of joseph not the son of god the son of joseph and he said who is this guy and he was amazed at their unbelief people of god as we are called to be of the household of faith we are of the household of faith and the faith that you and i exhibit it pleases god it pleases god we are not moved by what we see we are not moved by feelings you know it's a, if you're coming to church you i praise god for each and every one of you who has come here you come here with faith knowing that when you worship when you pray when you hear the word of god you will have an encounter that god will meet your point of need you're not getting up and saying oh i don't feel like going to church today or i my body is telling me i can't go to church today you are getting up in faith saying that whether i like it or not i am coming to church because i know god is going to move mightily in church or in every place we don't have to worry about the world's opinions the world is getting messed up more and more we can see that but even in the darkness when the light of god shines through the darkness cannot overcome it and that is the faith that paul is telling us to take on we walk by faith and not by sight and that is for this life that is not for it even in this life we walk by faith knowing that there is eternity ahead of us even as christians we don't have to even fear death the bible says he conquered death destroying the power of him of the death and the power of him who called, who was killing us and that faith is what keeps the christian going that faith is what keeps us advancing further that faith is what shields us and this life is a fight now don't go and fight with the next person you see but this from a spiritual perspective whether you like how okay how many of you have battles in life god is good so every battle that we face is a fight of faith your response to your battle should be one of faith my response to every battle that i face should be one of faith because the world may react to it one way but children of god will react to it another way why because we have faith in a god who is faithful we have faith in a god who has equipped us we have faith in a god who leads us in victory and many times we have to understand when we go in this battle we are not trying to push god to work on our behalf we are not trying to convince god we are not trying to twist god's arm with our faith we are not trying to twist god's arm with our faith because he is faithful the word of god says even when we are faithless he is faithful 
But faith helps us to appropriate what God has given us by grace. Faith helps us to appropriate what God has provided by grace. So the word of God says, you are saved by faith through grace. It is not of ourselves, but what God has done. But then what is the role of faith? God is not the one who's holding back. God is not the one who is saying, okay, uh, I'm going to see uh, if this guy is worthy of what Jesus has paid for. Jesus has already paid for it. But our faith is what helps us to take hold of every promise of God. Our faith is what helps us to take hold of everything that God has provided. Uh, you know, the word of God says in uh, 2 Peter, his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. That is talking about this life. His divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So if God has given it, if God has given it, how do we access it? By faith. We access it by faith. And the word of God says, for as many as are the promises of God, they are yes in him and amen in Christ. For the glory of God through us. That's what the word says. That is uh, 2 Corinthians 1.20. It is not there in the uh, PowerPoint. But 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, As many are the promises of God, they are yes in Christ and amen in him. For his glory through us. When we are fighting this spiritual battle and when we walk, it is God who gets the glory. We enjoy the success. God gets the glory. We enjoy the victory. We partake of the victory. God gets the glory. And that is how the world sees that these people are part of a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And faith enables us to resist the enemy's attacks. This verse clearly says, you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. This is the best picture that I could find that could explain this. The verse says, you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. So we are the ones who are standing in faith. And what does the devil do? He throws doubts into your mind. He throws lies into your mind. He throws symptoms into your body. He throws, uh, you know, uh, world opinions into your head. All these things he does. And what does he do? When, when the devil throws a symptom of sickness in you, you come in faith, standing behind that shield of faith and declare, no. The word of God says, by his stripes, I am healed. We stand in faith behind that word. Stand in faith in God and he will come through. When the devil throws a lie at you, oh, your family, your son, your daughter, your husband, whoever is far beyond uh, saving, he's gone too far, he's gone uh, beyond the reach of God. The word of God says nothing can separate us from the love of God. And that is, God's hand is not short that he, he cannot reach that person. But we continue, we get down on our knees, we get down in prayer, we go into that prayer closet and continue praying, not from a place of fear, not just just a place of desperation but a place of faith and victory because God answers. God sends people. His angels intervene on our behalf. That is why it is our duty even uh, in TLC we have every Wednesday a time of intercession and prayer on Zoom and we have it uh, uh, once a month in house in, uh, in church. You know what we are doing in that time? We are exercising the shield of faith. We are exercising that shield because we know we serve a God who answers. We are not checklisting, okay, one month prayer done, one month uh, in-house prayer or whatever is done. We are saying, and believe me, the number of testimonies that we have heard about the prayer requests that have been prayed, even in this hall, when believers get together and pray in faith, are numerous are numerous because our God is faithful. 
TLC people of God, our God is faithful. And when we get together and we pray in faith, it not only moves the heart of God, it enables us to go forward in the victory that Jesus has already paid the price for. As we step forward in victory, we are seeing testimonies after testimonies happen here and now in the lives of people in this church. And who gets the glory? God himself. Jesus Christ is the one who gets the glory through TLC. The word of God says, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. That is a step of faith. We submit to God and we resist the devil and he will flee from you. Every lie. See, the devil's, the greatest, devil's greatest weapon is deception. In fact, he did that even from day one. Uh, God said, do not eat for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. And the uh, devil comes in as cunning as he is in the form of a serpent and shows them something. He says, you will not die. If you eat it, you will be like God. It is the same. And he is basically deceiving them with lies, saying what God said is wrong. What I am saying is true. So you follow. And it is, then it was Adam and Eve's choice what to do. Would they stay in faith and believe what God said is true or believe the lies of the enemy? Today, when the devil throws lies into your life, when he throws life, lies about your health, when he throws lies about your family, when he throws lies about you are not favored, you are not blessed, you are not this, it is yours and mine, our choice to say, no, I will stand on what the word of God says. I will stand on who my God is. And like that soldier standing there, all those fiery darts, all those arrows will hit the shield of faith and will come to nothing. Because no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in uh, judgment, you shall condemn. That is standing in faith on the word of God, knowing that our God is is able. Amen. And then Paul says to stand firm. Paul commands us or he, he exhorts the believers stand firm in this faith stand firm why stand firm because i told you the example of the uh, the pulpit considering the pulpit as my shield imagine there are bullets coming all the way consider this a western movie and you're having somebody with a machine gun you have all the gangsters uh, the agents of satan shooting with uh, ak-47s you know that movie they come out of the house. all that is happening that's happening right now yeah i am standing behind this unshakable shield. This is faith, faith in Christ. The moment I decide to just go out and see what's happening or take a peek on myself, I am hit. Then you don't blame the shield. Were you standing behind the shield? You have stepped out into where you will get hit. That is why we have to stand firm in this faith. And how do we do that? We don't get swayed by the opinions of the world. We don't get swayed by what people tell us. We have to stand firm in the faith, assured that God is faithful. And not moved about by circumstances or natural things. Yes, there are natural things happening. But you and I have a higher power who is for us and not against us. And as we do that, you know, the Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 1, this is how the Bible describes faith. So I've taken it from the Amplified Version because this, this hit me in the head when I read it. Now faith is the assurance, the title deed, confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed, and the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. You will be looking at impossible situations, impossible in the natural. But nothing is impossible to him who believes. That is what the word of God says. And this faith is what helps us. The Bible is full of examples of supernatural faith. Uh, how many of you know of Abraham? You know in uh, Romans, uh, 4, Romans 4, 20 it is that Abraham had a word from God. Abraham, so it, it says about Abraham, Abraham had a word from God that he will be blessed with a child. And his body being good as dead, Sarah's womb being good as dead, he did not even consider it. And he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. What does that mean? But 
was strengthened in faith. This is a prime example of standing firm. A prime example of standing firm. You have a word. We have this word. We have this word of God. And then we have natural words. Words of the world. Maybe a doctor's report that comes against you that says you are going to be sick. You have only this much time to live. You have only, you can call all your family members. You can do all those things, whatever you want. Because your time is up. But then we have a word that says, with long life, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. You have a word when the doctor's report comes against you, just like Abraham, don't consider it. Don't, we're not saying that is not there. Abraham's body was there. Sarah's body was there. But there was a word that superseded the natural, a supernatural word. You and I, we have this word, a supernatural word that supersedes every circumstance, every situation that we may face. And as we stand in faith, because this is what it says about Abraham, being fully convinced that he who promised is faithful to bring it to pass. You and I, do we believe that our God who has promised is faithful to bring it to pass? That is standing behind the shield of faith. You know, uh, uh, it says in the Old Testament, the eyes of the Lord go to and fro on the earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose hearts are fully committed to him. Fully committed to him. Now, the thing is, you have to look at it from two points. What is God looking to do? He's looking to show himself strong. He's not looking to hold back. He's looking to show himself strong. This is the nature of God. He wants to show himself strong on behalf of those who call upon him. He wants to show himself strong because then the people around will see. We see it in the life of Daniel. We see it in the life of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We see it in the life of Rahab. We see it in the life of Abraham. Every Hebrews, Hebrews 11.30 gives you the full example of all. And it says... Even more we can say, but we will not be able to write it now. Because they inherited the promises of God. They reacted in faith. They reacted in faith. The shield that we have is what we are to hold on to. Stand firm in. Irrespective of any situation. Irrespective of what comes against you. Forget about what the world will say. This is too much for you to handle. But nothing, nothing is too much for our God to handle. And he does it. He shows himself strong on our behalf when we are fully committed to him. We don't waver at the promises of God, but be strengthened in faith. And that's why it is, it is important. You know, uh, in, in Corinthians, I believe it, it says, be on guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous and do not fear. We are to stand firm, be on guard and stand firm in the faith. What is being on guard? I'll give you a, a very good example. Uh, of how we must fervently, fervently means passionately, with all seriousness, guard our lives against anything that the enemy tries to do to shake our faith. Anything and everything. Say, for example, you are watching uh, a very entertaining Netflix serial where uh, doctors are uh, working on medical patients and, uh, you know, there are people dying. Then there is one heroic doctor who comes and does something. There is a, a person with uh, some disease who is dying. Now, imagine this. Tomorrow, you get a report from a doctor that says you have a terminal illness. The first thought... That will come on your mind is that cereal that you saw. The old man is there. He's calling his children. Please hold my hand. I want to say my last words and this, that. And he calls and then the doctor is telling the, uh, we have tried our best. But imagine this. If your response is seeing Jairus' daughter raised back to life. If the first thought that comes in your mind is the woman with the issue of blood pushing all that aside. Then you won't be battling with fear. You will be moving forward with faith. My God has done this for them. My God is going to do it for me. My God is faithful. He never changes. He is not a respecter of persons. So that is why even in our lives we must throw out everything. We must leave it. Because whether you like it or not... We are in spiritual warfare. Whether you like it or not, the enemy is going to come against you and I. But whether he likes it or not, we have been given what we need to be equipped with victory, to defeat him, to say, you get out because I trust the word of God. You move because I know my God is faithful. 
anything. When, when uh, Jairus' daughter was uh, on the way, Jesus was going to Jairus' house. And initial plan was to heal his daughter. On the way, she died. And the people said, don't trouble the teacher. For she's dead. The world can see it two ways. The world can see it one way. Oh, it's gone. It's gone beyond hope. She's dead. Don't trouble the teacher. Jesus sees it another way. Oh, I was going to heal somebody. Now I'm going to raise the dead. That is how Jesus sees it. That is how we are supposed to see it. When the situation becomes worse, we know that the testimony is going to be greater. You know, when, when uh, David was facing Goliath, another example of it. The Old Testament is also so full of examples of faith. And when David was facing Goliath, he was, uh, he was talking to the king. King was saying, how are you going to do it? And uh, how are you so sure that you're going to do it? What does he say? The God who saved me from the lion and the bear, he will deliver me. The Lord who saved me from the lion and the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of the Philistines. Now see this. David has got his training. He has got his training with the lion and with the bear and whatever battles that he has faced. But ultimately, his faith is not in how many battles he has faced. But the Lord who was there with him in each battle. Then it does not matter if it's a lion, it's a bear, or if it's Goliath, or an army. Because the God who is with him is still greater, still greater, still greater. And then our faith is a response to how great our God is. Our faith is a response to who our God is. You know, uh, Paul says, uh, this faith, how does it come? This comes from being rooted in Christ. We cannot, we don't have to, first of all, we cannot. And then we don't have to try to build this faith up on our own. This faith comes from positioning yourselves in Christ, aligning to his word. You know, in Galatians 2.20, it says, For I have been crucified with Christ. No longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The life I now live, not when I get to heaven. The life I now live. We are singing songs of when we all get to heaven. What a day of... Even now is a day of victory. Even now is a day of victory. There will be great rejoicing when we get to heaven, but there is also victory of battles to be won here on this earth. And that is why uh, Paul writes, the life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, if you look at the original translation of that, now, now Paul is talking that he is dead, he is crucified. How much faith does a dead person have? None. So if he does not have any faith as a dead person, whose faith is he living by? The faith that he has received from being in Christ. You know, this, this verse is actually a positional truth for every believer. If I had somebody who is bigger than me, I would, uh, I, I would pull them up, up forward. So, like, if I am an unbeliever, I'm standing here, and then I move into this section, behind a person who is bigger than me. Then when somebody comes against me, they're not coming against me, they're coming against Christ. And that is why we have this faith in Christ. And how do we, how do we, what do we do to build on this faith? Or what do we do to equip ourselves in this faith? We hear the word of God. What does the word of God say? Faith comes by? And hearing by the word of God. Replace your Netflixes. Replace your serials. Replace your entertainment. Replace everything that is worldly with things that are of God. Because when you need it, it is not your cereal, it is not your entertainment, it is not those home improvement shows, or it is not those 300 episode long, uh, in India it is mother-in-law versus daughter-in-law serials, yeah? It is not them that will come and keep you equipped. It is how rooted you are in Christ and how much you know his word that you can take access of what God has done. As we put our trust in him, then he is our shield. The word of God says in Proverbs, he is a shield to all those who trust in him. We put our trust in him. And then you know what? You know who you are surrounded by? 
you are surrounded by the very presence of God. You are surrounded by him protecting. He lives in you. He's all around you. And it says, even in Psalms 115, verse 9 to 11, it says, O Israel, trust in the Lord, for he is a help and a shield to them. O house of Aaron, trust in the Lord, for he is a help and a shield. O those who fear the Lord, trust in him, for he is their help and their shield. When you are rooted in God and his word, then he is your shield. He is the one who is with you in your battles. He is the one who has already won the battle and you are the one who is now in him going to walk in victory every step of the way. People of God, I believe that you and I, each one of us, will walk in victory through every battle that we face as we stand firm in him. We, we can say that if God is truly for us, who can be against us? We are never alone in our battles. We are never, and that realization itself, that realization that we stand be, be firm behind that realization that you and I, we are never alone. We stand firm. And next is, we have victory through this faith. We are called to walk in victory through this faith. One of the foundational differences, foundational, foundational differences between a believer, a child of God and the people of the world is that we have been given a faith that overcomes the world. The word of God says, 1 John 5, 4 and 5, what is the victory that has overcome the world? Our faith. We have been given a victory that overcomes every situation and circumstance and through faith we can access that victory. We don't have to let the world influence us. We don't have to let the things in this world influence us. But you and I, we are called to be world changers. We are called to be people. And this is what Paul is hitting at right now in this. Even the armor of God is so that in this life, in this world, you can be world changers for the glory of God. Because your warfare is not against the people that you see around. Your warfare is not against the natural opposition that is coming against you. Your opposition is against a spiritual force that is trying to attack you but put on the armor of God stand behind the shield of faith you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one through Jesus Christ we have already overcome the world we have overcome the world everything it is through faith that we truly know and trust God it is through these eyes of faith and we face every battle that we see with eyes of faith you know, when, uh, when uh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus talks about it, when, what, is, what is facing a battle with eyes of faith? That determines your response. Jesus said, speak to the mountain. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you will speak to the mountain, command it to go from here into the sea, and it will go. We don't worry about the mountain that we face, but we command the mountain in faith. We don't pray from a place of desperation. We pray from a place of faith. The word of God says in 1 John 5, 14 and 15 that this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if he hears us, we know that we have what we have asked of him. We have it. We're not trying to push God to give. We know we have it. And as, as you look, even, even uh, the word of God says, whatever, when you pray, believe that you have received and you will have them. That is the response of faith. You pray, peace. You pray, you know God is faithful. We, people of God, every battle that we face, everything that we do, when we know that God is with us, we can face them with confidence. We can face them knowing that victory is already ours in Jesus' name. We experience victory in life through an unshakable faith in Jesus Christ. As we close, I just want to encourage all of you right now, as we have heard of this shield of faith, take this moment to see the battles that you are facing. Are there any battles that you're facing? It may be your family. It may be your work. It may be your finances. It may be your visa issues. It may be even any challenge, your health issues, anything that you face. Choose to see those challenges 
with eyes of faith. Because our God is faithful.